Bonjour. Ça, c'est le camp. Le Kalaou, 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 ça, c'est and uh, we're heading off to the old village and we're gonna do a little tour around and then we're gonna go check out some sacred fish which i'm still not exactly sure what that is so i'm looking forward to finding out so we just stopped off in a little shop here that sells some wood carved items and i bought a little statue of a woman carrying the stuff on her heads which you see all over the country which is really interesting so i paid 8,000 francs for that, which I'm not exactly sure. It's about $15, I think. I'll put it below. And uh, now we're headed off into, uh, it's called the Old Village. So it should be interesting to see some local life again. So let's see what happens. She's the daughter of the village. So this is the entry to the village. Mm. C'est le noyau de la ville. C'est ici que tout a commencé. Le stem de city. Everything in this city started from here. So these are the four different groups. Interesting. Traditional people, Muslims, the historic keepers, and the blacksmiths. Okay, interesting. Là où nous nous retrouvons, c'est la partie des animistes, la première partie. Where we found ourselves here is the part of the traditional religious people. À l'époque, la ville n'était pas assez grande. Chaque groupe avait son travail. Because at the beginning, beginning, because the whole city wasn't big, so each group had its own work, job to do within the community. Les animaux, c'est eux qui étaient des cultivateurs, the traditional religious people, the farmers as well. They were farming to feed the whole village. The Muslims were the the Muslims were the the fighters. They faisaient la guerre pour protéger le village. They were fighting to protect the village. En cas de malade aussi, c'est pour qu'ils soignent. When also if there were sick people, they were the one responsible to. To, to care for them. As for the historic keepers, they are the ones that will sing the praises and the, the trust in the line uh, tree of each family. They know the, each family's history. Ils sont comme les médiateurs du village. They are also seen as uh, the mediums in the village. En cas de problème dans les familles, c'est les griots qui interviennent. If uh, there is a problem in any family, they were the one to settle it down. Quant au forgeron, uh, for the blacksmiths, ils fabriquaient des tabacs pour les cultivateurs. They were then uh, making the working tools for the farmers and the outils de guerre pour les guerriers and uh, also the war tools for those who are who were fighting à l'époque c'était il y avait pas la monnaie c'était en échange uh, at that time people did not use money as such for transaction it was just uh, a kind of exchange ça c'est un peu en grosso modo si ils ont des questions and this is the introduction of uh, what we are going to see, but if you have any questions, please 
Okay, great. Thank you very much. Very good. Sam, what are these? What are these? Yeah. Very uh, food, very loved food here. Okay. It's a kind of worms. So these are a kind of worm. Yes, and uh, they are very rich in terms of protein. Okay, protein to feed and uh, to nourish people. Okay. So whenever they appear in uh, the shoot, the shoot tree. Okay. And then they collect them, they fall on the ground. Right. Big like that. And they, they have, uh, they are very uh, oily, greasy. Oily, okay. But they will dry them up. Right, and then they will eat them. They just eat them as is, or do yes, they? Yes, they can eat them that, like that. Yeah. They can also cook. Okay. Yes, or fry. Right. Yes, whatever. Interesting. But this one uh, now dry. Right. Then they can eat or, or cook with rice. Okay. With whatever. Interesting. It's replaced the meat. Right. During the season when they get these things around, the butcher are in big trouble. <laughs> the meat is not, uh, you know, much appreciated, much bought uh, from families. Everybody wants this because it's for nothing. Right, it's much fall, cheaper. Much cheaper, and uh, it's said by the nutritionist that is very, uh, I mean, high protein. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I remember Daniel was showing us about it before. We yeah. see how they make the local beer. We're going to see how they make the local beer. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Celle qui a ici, elle fait partie des meilleurs bouletières du village aussi. This may be in the one of the best uh, beer makers. This, right here. The best beer. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're gonna go and see how some local beer in the village is made. Uh, are we gonna get to try some, Sam? If you want, maybe. If you want. If I want, I can try some. Okay. Will I? Will I get sick? Uh, Maybe. 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 Maybe not. <laughs> it's 50-50 if I'll get sick or not. 50-50. Maybe it's worth it then. Yeah. Go ahead. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Ici, c'est la préparation de Dolo, la bière locale. Here is uh, the preparation of uh, the local beer. Uh, au départ, c'est du sorbon rouge. Uh, to begin with, uh, the material is sorbon. It's kind of millet. Okay. It's called sorbon. On les laisse à l'état de décomposition. Ça va se germer. Uh, water it and let it uh, just start to to, uh, to develop shoots 
quand ça se gère, on les prend, on les fait sécher à that level, des tickets et des de droits. Quand c'est sec, on les prend, on les crasse. Quand ils se droit, on les pound. Le, la farine obtenue, le fleur, le fleur, le fleur, le la farine, on prend, on le fait bouillir, le date de fleur de you to cook pendant deux à trois jours, uh, during two to three days. On met un peu de levure dedans pour la fermentation. Uh, they put uh, some... Uh, uh, what you put in the bread? To, the the, the, the yeast. yeast. Some yeast. The juice obtained from the bread. Then the juice which will be obtained from that uh, boiling flour and the yeast will Okay. If you take a little, it just clean and washes your bed. But if you take much, it makes your, your head wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it does good, he says. Okay. Yes. Yeah, very good. Okay. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Can I walk around and see? Yeah. No problem. All right, so I've talked myself into trying some of this local beer here, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've given them 500 francs, which is about one dollar, and I'm asking them for a very, very small amount. I'm a little bit afraid, I really hope I don't get sick, but uh, I figure while I'm here, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I have to give it a shot. And I bet you I'm getting it out of this gourd. Right. <laughs> so I'm trying some of the local beer, and uh, hopefully I don't die. This is how it looks. This man knows how to use a camera. Yeah. Okay, it's not too bad. It's a little sour. And it's like slightly warm. Um, it's not the worst thing I've tasted before. Hello, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> okay, c'est bon. <laughs> Can I give it to somebody else? Yeah, give back to Okay, merci beaucoup. All right, so we're gonna head into uh, the religious part of the village now, and Sam said we're gonna take a look at the very first house that was built in this entire village. So it should be really interesting to see. I'm not sure how old. The uh, Sam, how old is the first house that was built? She had before can we see the house. Okay. This is the fetish which protects which is supposed to protect the village. The fetish function avec des animaux, plus précisément des poulets. the fetish works with uh, chicken. Okay. Uh, the fetish a besoin un peu de sang in the food. The fetish needs blood and uh, fetus. The rest of the animals are the fetish and the fetish uh, Depending on your problems, if your problems are small, then you start to sacrifice and uh, if it's medium, then you go up. If it's a big problem, you go again up to the top. And when you get to the top, then the problem is really massive and it needs uh, uh, cows and goats to 
Yeah. Okay, so they'll they'll sacrifice chickens. Yes. And then at the top is cows. Cows or goats. goats yes. <laughs> Uh, you don't uh, bring the, the, the good animals sable. to the top. <laughs> so when they, okay, they, good. they kill, they only kill the animal and they <laughs> the blood, and they pour the blood there. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Coolest kids in the whole village right here. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much you heard from that last little spot there, but Sam was explaining that uh, if people in the village had problems of any kind that they wanted to solve, they would go to this little mound and uh, they believed that if they sacrificed uh, like a chicken, it was for their small problems and it was on like the bottom part. And then uh, if your problem was big, you would go to the top and you would need to sacrifice a larger animal like a goat or a cow or something like this. The first house that has been built yeah, this house is uh, the house of the Bobo ancestor. La première maison construite ici, c'est la terre de Bobo. The first building ever built on this uh, land. Bobo du Lasso, c'est le nom donné par les colons. Bobo du Lasso is the name when the colons came. Ça veut, ça veut dire la ville de Bobo et de Djula. Which means the city of Bobo and Djula people together. Voilà, la maison a été construite au 11e And uh, this uh, house has been built on the 11th century. 11th century, okay. Et c'est toujours habité par les descendants directs de l'ancêtre Bobo. And uh, the house is always being used by the descendants of uh, the first inhabitant of the <laughs> so this house that we're looking at here is the very first house that was built in the village and they said it was built in the 11th century so it's very old and it's uh, still in pretty good shape it looks like we got some guys playing football <laughs> So in the historic part here, Sam was saying that they uh, will welcome visitors with music <laughs> and with a quick hello from the local children as well too, I guess. But uh, here's some guys playing some local music. <laughs> Welcome to the front. You are very welcome. Say music to welcome you to our land. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> All right, we've attracted the attention of the entire children of the village. It's an association that was set up by youth. Because we 
were jobless. Mm. Uh -huh. So we just bought uh, one of these little elephants and two of these little hippos and it was 3,000 total, which is uh, about $6, I think. So, uh, and he said all of the profits go to the local village and to the cause of uh, keeping the children off the streets and keeping them educated. So uh, I think it's a fair price and also going to a good cause, so that's great. And all of this stuff was made by locals in the village as well too, so even better. <laughs> Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, I love all the kids, they want to come uh, get their photo taken. They don't know it's on video, but uh, it's basically the same thing. So that way I can put it into my videos and show, uh, show everybody the, the local kids. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> Look. Hello. Yes, say hi. <laughs> Photo? Yeah. Photos for everyone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, everybody, come, come together. Come together. Wow, look at that. Good. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Bye-bye. <laughs> so I've just finished off at the blacksmith area and I bought a little handmade uh, drumming statue, so that was really cool. And uh, now we've come here to see the sacred fish, finally. And they're massive. I don't know what kind of fish they are, but uh, they look like a mix of like a catfish and an eel almost. They're massive. And hopefully we can get closer down there so I can actually get them on video, but it's really interesting. And uh, I'll get uh, our guide, Umar and uh, Sam, to explain to me a little bit more about the fish, and hopefully they'll know what kind they are as well, too. So let's uh, take a look. And then uh, he said that... Uh, why they have become sacred fish? Because the first inhabitant uh, was guiding by a river, this river, to settle here. And uh, after he has settled in, he checked to find that from the spirit uh, what will uh, help him to live peacefully. Okay. So he was uh, showing that uh, he shouldn't eat the fish because if he eat the fish, the water will dry up and then there will not be water provision for them and okay. his family. So therefore, they're uh, giving the, uh, having the forbidden to the eating them uh, so that they can have no water before. So if one never one dies, it has to be buried. Okay, so they bury the fish? Yes. Wow. Uh, is there any way I can go down closer to see them? You can, you can go down, but uh, it's very dirty. That's fine. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't mind. You don't mind? Yeah, no worries. Then, uh, as long as you can't come back up. Yeah, I won't touch them. It's yes. fine. No problem. That's fine. Okay. Alright, I'm careful. I will. Maybe sleeping. Okay. Yeah. Alright, we're going down to see the fish. And we're going to try not to completely eat it on the way down. There's a lot of garbage over here though. Oh, that's a lot of flies as well. Alright. So Sam was saying that these are a type of uh, black catfish and uh, he was explaining as well that uh, one of the first settlers of this village was led here by the river and uh, the fish provided him with some form of wisdom. So they decided that uh, if any of the fish were to die or be eaten that uh, the river would dry up and they would no longer have 
um, water, obviously. So that's how the fish have become sacred. And if a fish dies, they actually bury it. And uh, so it's really, really interesting. And these guys are just hanging out here. This is super cool. I never expected anything like this. Um, so it's been a really cool day so far. Uh, I'm just gonna get a couple more shots of this area and then I'm gonna walk back up and we'll uh, finish the tour off. So hope you guys have enjoyed so far. It's been a really uh, action-packed and informative day. I've really enjoyed myself. So yeah, just gonna take a few more shots and then uh, we'll get out of here. We've just arrived at uh, Sam's house and he said it's okay for me to film a little bit so I figured I should uh, show how he's living here compared to, you know, s how some people in the village are. You're ruining my video. <laughs> I figured I should show here how he lives compared to people in the villages and see kind of the contrast of everything. So this is the place. And this is his dog. And these are his chickens. It's a very beautiful area. Yeah, there they are. So it's very nice of him to have invited us for dinner and we're gonna go inside and uh, meet his family and see what we're having. How are you? Very well, thank you. Bonjour. <laughs> nice to meet you. Bonsoir. Thank you very much. Ça va bien. <laughs> very beautiful home. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Tonight we are here at our house here in Bobo, which is uh, located at Center 25 of Bobo Divaso. And uh, we are very pleased to have you. Thank you for coming to us all the way from Canada. <laughs> Thank you for God having bless us. Bless you and bless your stay with, you, with us. It's a great pleasure and honor for us to have you tonight to share uh, a simple local meal with us. So tonight we have on the menu rice <laughs> with chicken with tomato sauce. Uh, beside that, we have uh, plantain and uh, 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 and uh, potatoes, uh, and then we have uh, bananas, monkey bananas. <laughs> so, yes. Very good. Thank I you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So here's the kitchen where all the delicious food was just cooked and I'm 
super grateful for Sam allowing us to uh, come into his home and eat and also for me to film all of this so it's been really really nice and uh, now this is the end of the video officially uh, I thought I would end it earlier but I wanted to show this as well because I thought it was really really interesting so thank you guys for joining me today I'll see you in the next video